Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA with a private practice in West Los Angeles. And today we're going to discuss the composite and amalgam preparation on the acadental tooth number 30. This is one of these caries teeth that you'll be presented with at the ADEX exam, the CDCA examination, very similar to this and it will have caries on the mesial and you'll need to produce a preparation that removes the decay and follows all of the requirements for a class two. I'm gonna show the amalgam today because I think it's more challenging than the composite. We're gonna start with a 330 diamond. And the reason for choosing the diamond is that this enamel surface is very hard and with a carbide, there's a chance that you'll push the carbide into the dentin and go too deep. But when you use the diamond, you can have a little bit more control. Always use a finger rest, of course, but the diamond, I think, will provide a better result for you. So we like to follow the primary grooves, and that means any groove that is separating one cusp from another. And extend into these areas approximately a millimeter or so. I think if you're a half a millimeter or a millimeter and a half, it probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. Just extend so that it shows that you know that that is an area that you would typically include. So the initial outline form looks like this, and you can see immediately the amount of caries, which in this case extends significantly gingivally. And I looked at the tooth outside of the mouth, and I saw the amount of caries that extended towards the cervical was extensive. So we would anticipate, as we start to drop our box with the same 330 diamond, we would anticipate that this preparation gingival wall will be located significantly gingival than maybe a more conservative preparation. So when we're completed, we're gonna have a larger space between the gingival outline and the adjacent tooth. You could choose to go a little bit further with the burr, but I went ahead and picked up a hand instrument. And thinking back on this, I probably should have done a little bit more of, with, the, uh, with the burr because of that right there. And that was sort of a shock to me to see a large piece break off like that. And it should be a really good lesson for all of you to understand that if you tried to take off too big of a piece with the Sturdivant chip, you could very easily chip away this brittle enamel that is perhaps not as well bonded to the dentin underneath. And uh, I would recommend that you're just more burr centered than you are instrument centered with your approach. But I think I was able to recover because the decay did extend significantly gingivally and we were able to end up with a preparation that would meet the standards of the examination. Be mindful of the adjacent tooth. One of the uh, reasons for failing any examination would be nicking the adjacent tooth and the other one would be leaving undermined enamel or leaving caries behind. So here we are now with the initial outline form. We need to work on that a little bit more and we're going to focus on the decay. So if you're in an exam and you need to make a request to remove caries, then go ahead and do that. Otherwise, just go ahead and remove the caries, but you're gonna probably wanna use a round burr for this particular procedure. So I'm gonna use the four round burr. The four round burr seems to be pretty much the right size burr to use, in slow speed of course, for most conservative class twos. It's not too large and it's not too small. And just by rotating the burr, uh, up against that axial wall just briefly you can remove the caries. Make sure that it's tactically gone, visually gone. If you leave decay behind that will cause you to fail any examination. And now we're just going to go over the the outline form, finish up all the smoothing with a 330 RGS burr and this is going to be used to blend any sharp edges away, create the S curves between the occlusal and the box area as well. And I'm utilizing the slow speed at this point, but you could clearly do this with a high speed. Just be careful when you're going around the preparation, realizing that the material in the enamel area is quite hard and the dentin area is actually quite a bit softer. 
So here's the final preparation. I think it meets the standards. Um, one thing that I like to do is use the ginger margin trimmer to s smooth off any loose enamel rods. You could even put a bevel down at the gingival and uh, leave that area on the axial alone. They expect to see something hollowed out like this. This is typical for an examination. You're not going to have the ideal box shape because of the carries. Make sure that you're at least 1.5 millimeters deep, 1.5 to 2, and that you've met all the requirements of the examination that you're taking. It's really a good idea to go back over with an explorer and make absolutely certain that you have no soft areas. One of the cool things about the Academal Caries Tooth is that it has soft decay, and the examiners will feel for this. If you found this helpful, Guarimos Magisterium. Looking forward to making another video soon. Take care.